Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. It is me, Alana. For this video, I'm going to be talking about all the books I read in February. So, in the month of February, I read four books. And I enjoyed them for the most part. Um, I ended up traveling in February, so I didn't get as much reading done as I did in January which is not a bad thing just I was busy so um I only ended up reading I think I said I only ended up reading four books which I'm cool with actually it's four more than I thought because I I don't know why but I up until like right before I was filming this I thought I only read one book so I don't know what's wrong with me but um Jumping right in, the first book I read in February was The Devil's Thief by Lisa Maxwell. So this is the second book in the um, Last Magician series quartet. I don't really know how many books there are anymore. I gave this one three stars. Um, this was interesting. So I liked the first one for the most part. I think I gave that like three or four stars. And then I read this one and... I'm gonna be completely honest like I don't know where she's going because the first one we had a clear like plot point and so I was like oh we're just gonna keep following this plot and then we get to this one and it just seems like she derailed it like it there the plot shifted and then it it became non-existent because there was a goal like at the end of the first book they had a goal set and then they went on this like journey for this specific goal and then when you get into this book they start off going to to achieve that goal and then it they're just like derailed and so I was like well maybe this is just a derailment and then like at the end they'll get back on track but they don't at the end they're still derailed so I'm just kind of like what <laughs> like what how are they gonna complete this goal when they're like like they were going like they were on track a and then they ended up on track C, but the goal is still on track A, and there's track B in the middle. So I'm like, how are they going to hop back over to track A if they're still on track E when we finish this book? I don't know if I'm making any sense. But either way, I don't know what she's doing. <laughs> like... Yeah, like, I, I, there were still certain points that I was, like, intrigued by, and I was livid at certain points, too, so there's a sapphic couple, like, sapphic, so there's, there's a sapphic relationship, or spark of one in this book, and I hate it, mostly because, um, within the book, the girl, one of the girls ends up going on this, like, like, does this, like, really bad, like, racist thing. <laughs> and I, like, and it's racist towards the other girl. So I just, I can't support the relationship anymore. <laughs> like, I was livid when I read it. I was like, this girl, but I was like, she better not take her back. I can't, I can't do it if she does. And so by the end of the book, they do, they, like, they're kind of separate, but there's, like, this inkling. And so if we get into the third book and they get back together, I'm going to be pissed. I'm just going to say that now because there was, there's just no excusing the girl's behavior. So that's one thing. But then, so that, honestly, that knocked it down a star for me because I was like, I can't. It was just a very confusing book. I'm just going to say that because, again, we started with the plot and then we ended and I was like, where did the plot go? So, that's all I'm going to say because I, like, I can't go into it without spoiling and I don't, I don't want to spoil. So, we're going to talk about what the first book was about. So, the first book is about this girl named Esta, who, it has been, like, groomed and raised to go on these like missions um because she has a power to jump through time to um search for these artifacts that her adoptive father wants um in order to like save the world or save their people of magicians so 
he sends her on the final mission back to like the 1920s to retrieve the final artifact and so when she gets there her plan is like derailed a lot and then she starts to realize that um she doesn't really know who to trust in this time um because she gets wrapped up with a lot of people and a lot of a lot of different um like schemes and and plans and she realizes that she doesn't really know who she can trust fully um in order to complete her mission and from there basically all hell breaks loose because just so many things unravel and she realizes not everybody has a kind heart and it just it goes downhill from there so yeah that's all I'm gonna say on this one I'm gonna move on because it's confusing so next I read Finley Donovan Donovan jumps the gun um which this was my buzzword for February which was I think a a title with a verb in it and so jumps is a verb so there we go um I gave this four stars I absolutely loved it of course I'm gonna be honest I thought this was the last book <laughs> and then I got to the end and I was like oh there's another one <laughs> So I was like, whoops, my bad. Because <laughs> I definitely said in my TBR video that it was like the final book. It's not. There's another one. <laughs> Which honestly I'm happy about because like I get to like exist with these characters more. But I just, it like threw me off. I was like, wait, there's another one. <laughs> so yeah. Um, this is like a continuation kind of from the events of the first two books. So this follows uh, Finley Donovan who is like a who's a single mom, um, a failing writer at the time of, that you start the first book, and she's like behind on all her bills, behind on her writing deadline by like two years, and she's still dealing with her husband, or her ex-husband, who is like hounding her for money and all this kind of stuff. So one day she meets with our editor, and she's a mystery writer, so she's talking about all the plot points in her book. <laughs> And this other lady at another table overhears the conversation and assumes that Finley is a hit woman. <laughs> and so she tries to hire Finley to kill her husband for her. And from there, it just goes downhill because Finley accidentally gets involved and then there's a dead body and she doesn't know how there's a dead body. And it just, it just goes downhill. And then her and her babysitter are like the dynamic duo of the day. And it's just great. It's a... Uh, funny it's like relatable at times and it just like is also wholesome so i really do enjoy these books um so this one continues from the first two books and in this one um she is i think trying to clean up the mess from the second book which i won't really spoil but it involves her um owing this like big gangster and um, trying to basically tie up the loose ends from the last book, which now that I know there's another book, this makes more sense that things weren't like concluding like I thought they were. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I found it super funny. I really do love her, like the dynamics between her and her nanny. Like they're actually such a funny duo and pair. And so I'm always cracking up whenever I'm like reading that, reading the book and the dialogue is just hilarious. Um, I love that uh, she's finally giving the cop a chance. If you know what I mean, you know what I mean. I'm just, I'm so glad because I like, I love him. I love him better than the lawyer, than the lawyer so... <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's all I'm going to say because I don't want to spoil it because it's the third book and it does pertain to other things in the previous two books. But I definitely urge you to read this if you're just looking for like a fun, cozy mystery um, with like some good humor. Next, I read the first book in the House of Night series, Marked, by PC and Kristen Cass. So I gave this three stars. This is a reread. It's like an old reread. I, it's been a few years. Um, for the most part, it wasn't a bad read. It definitely reads for its time, which I think was like the early 2010s, I believe. So this definitely reads like it was written in that time, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but like it's also not necessarily a good thing either. So, yeah, but if also a girl named Zoe Redbird, who is 
um, lives in this world where you're either a human or you're a vampire. And so when you're a vampire, um, you, when you're first discovered to be one, you are marked. And so with your mark, um, when you are marked, you're supposed to immediately go to one of the boarding schools for vampires where they train you on how to adjust to this new life. And while you're there, your body's supposed to be going through the process of changing into a vampire. But at any point, your body can give up on the change and not, like, complete it, and you could die. So that's also a concern. So Zoe is marked, um, but she's special because when she gets to the school, her mark is filled in, which is abnormal for a fledgling vampire. And she discovers that she actually has some very strong abilities, which is also very rare for a, for a fledging vampire, a new vampire. So, um, from there, she is having to adjust to this new environment, this new school, the new people. She didn't really know a lot about the vampires, and the things that she did know were manipulated tales from the um, big religious cult that basically rules against the vampires. So she is just trying to like adjust and figure out where she fits in and how she wants to portray herself in this new school with the, all these new people. And it's just a journey for her because she's having to um, really find who she wants to be, I guess. So it's interesting. Again, not bad. She, it definitely reads like a 16-year-old, though. I'm going to be honest. Like when you're reading the book, it definitely, like her voice is 16. So... I guess it's good because it's who you're reading from, but at the same time, you're just like, wow, this person is young. So that's just it. But I'm intrigued to move on to in the series and see how I feel. Um, me and Solo, I think, are going to be trying to read through the entire series this year and go from there. So we'll see. The camera is about to die, so let's see if I can do this before it does. So the last book I read in, my, in February was... Um, Monsters Born and Made by Tanvi Burwa. Burwa. I hope I said that right. Sorry. So, I gave this three stars. I read the audiobook. It was okay. I didn't really... I really didn't know what the story is about going in. So, I didn't mind just finding out and like going with the flow of it. It was definitely interesting. So, it follows this girl who lives in this world where... Like, you're, I, I'm trying to figure out how to describe it. So they're like plagued by monsters from the sea constantly. So her family is a family of hunts, hunters, which they're the only ones allowed to hunt these like water stags almost. And with that, they get special privileges. But really, they, like, they're, they're just as poor as everybody else. It just seems like they get extra privileges from the other people. Um, around them so those people usually don't like them. The world is split up between peasants and I guess the ruling class. It, it, the world dynamic was still a little confusing to me so excuse me while I work it out verbally. <laughs> um, and so every like I guess year they have this like water stag race like chariot race but only the elite can take part in it. So the girl and her family have been really down on hard times and they can't afford a lot of stuff right now, especially the medicine they've been getting for her younger sister because her younger sister has been sick her whole life. And so in order to pay for her sister and pay back all their debts before their family loses their home, she signs up for this race and in doing so pisses off a lot of people. And there she runs into her ex-boyfriend who's an elite, but it's it was like a secret relationship. And yeah, it's weird. It's it's like a really interesting story. I can't tell if I liked it or not, to be completely honest. And I don't know I don't even know if there's gonna if this was just a standalone, if there the, if there's gonna be another book. Because when I looked at the book or, like, when I looked on Goodreads, the second, like, I looked at this part where it was talking about the second book. It said it was going to take place, it, it was going to feature a story from another island. So I was like, is there, 
is is this a standalone did they move like i just i'm confused so that's just kind of how i feel about this book um it wasn't bad it and i think i liked it but it just was like confusing with the pacing i guess there's also like a rebel group causing issues and yeah it's it's interesting and then like the guy yeah <laughs> so that's just how i felt about it if you i don't want to spoil anymore so i just say read it on your own and see how you feel and go from there um but yeah i'm sorry this probably wasn't very helpful but i'm trying so yeah we're we're just gonna go with that um but if you read it i hope you guys enjoy it <laughs> like the myth mythological monsters are cool um i saw a review though on goodreads that was like they couldn't really it's supposed to be asian inspired and they couldn't really feel that and i'm gonna be honest and say the same thing because it i didn't feel like them and maybe i could be wrong and this just could be my lack of knowledge but like the monsters that she was giving us in the story did not feel asian inspired they just feel like monsters so i don't know but i just could be wrong i could totally be wrong so take that with a grain of salt please but yeah so those were all the books i read in february i did start um the midnight bargain by cl polk but i do not know if i'm gonna finish it um before the end of this month so i guess i'll keep you updated on that i don't know but if you um like the video please like it down below if you have any comments questions or concerns please leave all that in the comment section let me know um what your favorite book was in february and if you want to see more videos from me please hit that subscribe button you're awesome lovers in the world we 